Hi, people. Praise the Lord. I am well and blessed. Uh, I hope you're keeping well. You're keeping safe. Yeah, I thank God for this opportunity um, to come and share the word of, of, of God with, uh, with you guys. And I welcome you all on board. Thank you for, for tuning in and for the support. New and old people, I welcome you all. And uh, I thank God for all of you. Thank you so much. So uh, this word, for today's word, it is, uh, I had mentioned sometimes back that I would do a, a word regarding God's word. Yeah. And uh, today's word is um, Christ the word. Christ the word I received on first. Um, that is when now God started ministering to me. Of course, he ministers to us um, like every day, even regarding different uh, like a different topic you would minister and it's a continuous process yeah so i thank god for this and um yeah we, we are basically going to focus on christ being the word and the word of god christ being the word and the word of god and how also we um we ought to use the word of god in our prayers yeah so this might be a series and uh, depending on how the lord is going to lead me and uh, how uh, the lord is going to help me and encourage us all when we are doing this um it is always good to just have your bible or go back and uh, check uh, what are we we've learned and uh, try to like reason out um with yourself uh that is what uh, learning is yeah you remember the bereans uh, the Bereans, uh, Paul would teach and they would go back to their Bibles and they would search the Bible, they would search the word and they would compare the word. Uh, because you're all human, we are, all, we are learning every day. I don't know everything. You don't know everything. We all learn from each other and we bless God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your grace. I offer myself unto you this day. Use me, anoint me, fill my cup, O oh God, and let it overflow. I pray for the ears of my listeners, O oh God. Let them hear what you want them to hear, O oh God. I pray for their hearts, O oh King of all glory, that you shall open up their hearts, O oh God, and they shall perceive what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, O oh God. I pray that their hearts shall be, O oh God, like a, a fertile ground, where the word shall fall, it shall germinate, it shall grow, and it shall bear fruits, King of all glory, to the glory and to the honor of your name. Lord, increase in me, Lord, as, uh, as I decrease, O oh God. Be seen, O oh King of all glory. Receive all the glory through this, O oh God. For your great and for there is none like you. I surrender to you, O oh God. Use me as it pleases you. In Jesus' name, I do pray and I trust and I believe. Thank you, guys. Uh, so we are going to, to start off. And uh, this is going to be a very interesting uh, a, a very interesting session. And I hope uh, I will not be taking much time uh, through the session. So, um, so I do not know how you use uh, the word of God. And I do not know how you take the word of God. Personally, I take the word of God with a lot, a lot of weight. And the word of God, I mean the word, um, the word now the Bible. The word um, that has been spoken by God and the word that has been uh, spoken through the men and the women of God. All right. That is the word of God because they also receive a word from, from God. So I take uh, that word with a lot of weight and I'm very cautious when receiving the word of God. And uh, of course, we don't just receive the word of God and we just, just sit there and uh, do nothing about it. You know, we pray about the word and uh, we are now going to see how these are uh, the word affects and how it brings things to life and how it uh, produces, it uh, makes things to prosper. It just uh, the word of God also says that uh, in the book of Hebrews, uh, Hebrews, uh, Hebrews, um, uh, in the book of uh, Hebrews, uh, uh where is that uh i'm losing that in the book of hebrews hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 it says for the word of god is alive and active no let's just stop at that point the word of god every day it doesn't matter who the word was spoken to not the bible word it doesn't matter who the word was spoken to but when you take that word it is alive every day and it is active to function and to to make whatever thing that it has been meant to uh 
to achieve to make it come to pass praise the lord so i hope you're going to enjoy this session so we are going to start when the lord started ministering to to me most of the time I, i'm in the middle of prayer and i use the word of god i like or when i pray i use the word of god very more often and when i i was in this when i'm saying this verse it just coming so heavily and now that is when he started praying it was john 1 1 that god i was praying that i'm coming to you through your word yeah through your word who is your son jesus christ and now he stay pouring in things and uh this is why we are, i'm bringing this to you so that you may also know how god also takes his word and how uh his word is more weightier it is more weighty when we take it and we, when we have a knowledge about the word of god yeah it is also good to have knowledge about what the word of god is saying regarding our situation and regarding our lives praise the lord so john in the, um, i'm going to use amplified version classified one edition uh, john 1 1 it says in the beginning before all times not in the beginning was the word this word in bracket it is christ and the word was with god yeah and the word was god in the beginning there was the word this word was christ this word christ was together with god and christ was god i've just um, um i'll try to break everything down pieces by pieces so that we can understand so in the beginning there was the word the word they say amplified uh, classic edition was christ and the word was with god we've seen the word was christ so christ was together with god in the beginning and the word was with god we all know that these are the three um three persons uh in the trinity we have the god the father god the son and god the holy spirit all right so in the beginning christ was there god was together with with christ and christ was he was god uh that is what the word says uh and the word was god himself he was present originally who was present the word or christ was present originally with god he was present originally with god all things were made and came into existence through him through who uh, we are going to uh, to see also what Hebrews 1, 2 says about uh, things, the creation and how things came into existence through him, that is through Christ. And without him was not even one thing made that has come into existence or that has come into being. So we've seen that there was the word. Yeah, we've, see, we've said that we are going to speak about the word of God that speak that that comes out of his mouth and we are going to see about christ the word and now we are seeing that everything that was created it was created through him and nothing that was created that could have been created without him hebrews 1 2 says in the last days uh in the last of these days he he has spoken to us who has spoken to us god has spoken to us in in brackets the person of a son whom he appointed who appointed the other god appointed his son he appointed him here or heir and lawful owner of all things yeah also by and through him we've seen what happened that things came into existence through christ that is in the book of john and here in the book of hebrews you're saying that also by and through him whom he created the world actually says the words wow i hadn't seen that and the riches of space the ages of time he made produced built operated and arranged them in order so we have seen in the book of john we also have seen in the book of hebrews how things came into existence through christ genesis chapter 1 verse 1 it says uh, in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth now the earth was formless and empty darkness was over the surface of the deep the spirit of god so we've seen god created and then now we can see that there's uh, the spirit of god was hovering the spirit of god was hovering over the waters and god said let there be let there be light 
no that is the word the creating word I hope I'm not going to lose you. We've seen that, that we are talking about the word that comes out of the mouth of God. We are talking about Christ the word. And we are talking about now how this brings things into existence. He said that let there be. All right, and there was light. And in the book of uh, Genesis 1:26, how we, we are going to see how these the three um the three uh, in uh, the Trinity how am I going to call them? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We're going to see how they were present even at the beginning in the creation. Uh, Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 uh, says, uh, said, let us, let us, who, who is the us? Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit make mankind in our own image, in our image, after our likeness, and let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and um, the tame, the beast over all of the earth, and over everything that creeps upon the earth. So we've seen that in the beginning God was there. The Son was there, and the Holy Spirit was there, and they were all involved in creation. And we see that God spoke things. Yeah, he spoke. He said, let there be, and things came into existence. I hope you're together at that. Yes, the Word of God, it creates, it brings things into existence. The Word of God says in the book of, uh, in the book of, uh, where, in the book of Romans, where, uh, Abraham was blessed and he was made the father of nation because he believed in God who speaks things that are not as though they are. That is in the book of Romans. In the book of Romans, uh, I cannot trace that. But it should be in the book of Romans. Um, let me open that just a minute. Yeah, so that is in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 4 verse um, 17. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God in whom he believed. The God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. Uh, the standard Bible, the standard English standard version says, As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations in the princes of God in whom he believed. Who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist? So, um, Abraham believed in this God who calls things into existence the things that do not exist. So, God in the beginning, he spoke things into coming to be. He spoke things, he, he said, let there be, and things came to be. Now, um, we might venture into how also we can create things, can speak things into coming to pass. The power that is in our tongue. The word of God in the book of Proverbs says, some of, the, some of these verses come in when I'm, 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 I'm in this uh, without having, having prepared all for that. Right, so sometimes I'll I'll go and uh, check on 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 what the verse says. So uh, the word of God in the book of Proverbs says, I believe eighteen. It says that uh, the word uh, our our tongue it has power. Life of life and death is in the power of the tongue, and those that know they shall eat the fruit of their tongue. In the book of Proverbs, let's um let's check on that. In the book of Proverbs, we all have power. So it is so even very good and it is good for you to be careful on what you speak in your life regarding your situation and regarding what is in your life proverbs chapter 18 verse um verse 20 it says from the fruit of their mouth a person's uh, stomach is filled with the harvest of their lips they are satisfied with the harvest i have i had actually not noted that we have a, there's a harvest that comes out of our lips that we shall be satisfied the tongue has the power of life and death and those who love it will eat its food yeah those who love it shall eat the food so it is also good to know that we also have power let's venture in on what uh on what uh we were talking about so god spoke things into being uh the word in the book of isaiah 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 55 11 says for as rain 
I think we should start from 10. For as, as the rain uh, and snow come down from the heavens and return not to the green, to, uh, not, and return not there again, but water the earth and make it bring forth and sprout, that it may give seed, it gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word. Now this is God saying, so shall my word be that goes forth. Okay. A minute. So um, the word says, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void without producing any effects or stroke useless. Um, that is in brackets. But it shall accomplish that which I please or my will and purpose that which i please it shall fulfill god's desire or it shall fulfill god's will or it shall achieve it shall uh what which i please and purpose it shall prosper in the thing for which i sent it that was god saying that any word that comes out of his mouth that includes the word of God, yeah? That includes the word of God, includes what the Lord himself says to us as human. That it shall not return to him void. I know I've used this verse for, for very many, like all my videos, but that's it. That is what the Lord says, that his word, it shall not return to him void without accomplishing that which... Um, he has purpose stitched to accomplish. And we're also going to see how God himself, he sent his word. And his word being his son. We've seen that in the book of John chapter 1. We've seen that the word was Christ also. And the word was God. And we see that uh, we're going to see how God, he sent his word, now Christ, to heal our diseases. What are these diseases? What are these? Uh, uh, what, what is it that is going to rescue us from? We are going to see that. Uh, we are going to see that right now in the book of a, uh, in the book of a, uh, uh, Psalm one o seven, Psalm one o seven twenty. It says, Psalm one o seven twenty. Uh, maybe we can start from seventeen. He sent his word and healed them and rescued them from their destruction. I love the way seventeen says. Verse seventeen says, verse seventeen. It says some are. Uh, some of the, these are amplified uh, classic edition. Some are fools made ill because of the way of their transgressions and are afflicted because of their iniquities. I, I need you to also note, note the transgressions and their iniquities. And what are we, what, what did God, okay, when God sent his word, what was he sending the word or sending the word to do? Sorry. What was he sending the word to do in our lives? To heal us. To heal us from what? To rescue us from what? We are going to see that in the book of James. James chapter 5, around 16, it says, Confess to one another, therefore your faults, your slips, your false, your false steps, uh, your offenses, your sins. All right? You confess to one another so that what? Uh, and pray also for one another that you may be healed. We see in 107.20 that the Lord sent his word to heal us and to rescue us. And now we are seeing in the book of James that uh, we should confess to one another our sins, our offenses, our slips. We should confess to one another and pray for one another so that we may be healed. I need you to note something. There's the spiritual healing and there's also the physical healing. The spiritual healing is heal, being healed from your sin, being healed from your iniquities, being healed from, from your transgression, being healed. We all know uh, there are people that say that they, these are a greater disease, these are greater disease than the diseases that we, we all know. There's a greater disease and that disease is sin. All right. So here, the word, uh, the Lord sent His word to heal us from our sins, to heal us from our sins and rescue us from what, from our destruction. We are going to see what happens when sin come into your life. As uh, still in the book of James, chapter five, sixteen, uh, for one another that you may be healed and restored. Into brackets to a spiritual tone 
that is now what we are talking about being healed from our sins uh tone of mind and a heart uh the earnest heartfelt continued prayer for over righteous man makes it makes tremendous it makes tremendous or dy- dynamic in its work in the book of james uh james chapter james chapter one we are going to see around uh let's start from uh chapter 1 verse 2 consider it pure joy my brothers and sisters whenever you face trials of many kind because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance let perseverance do its work and then 12 12 verse 12 it says blessed is the blessed is the one who perseveres and at trials because having stood the test of ta- or having stood the test that that person will receive the crown of life that the lord has promised to to those whom to those who love him 13 when tempted no one should say god is tempting me for god cannot te- for god cannot be tempted by evil nor does he tempt anyone 14 but each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desires and enticed then after desire has conceived so there is a desire which conceives it gives birth to sin when it gives birth to sin and sin when it is full grown it gives birth to death i hope you're together and i'm i hope i'm not losing anyone here so when we are being rescued from our sins what would that followed after us sinning and after us living in sin it is death we have seen it very clearly that when sin is full grown it leads to death there is the death of spiritual death and there is the physical death of course we know the repercussions of of living not in living not in accordance with the will of god and also the speech of death of um, of now the one that we know ilea sorry skiswahili uh we know the spiritual death of us dying spiritually and not having a relationship with our god and us having or going to hell after living in sin Praise the Lord. I hope you are together at that. So God sent his word to heal us our our sins, to heal our to heal us from our sins and to rescue us from the destruction which is death. I hope you are together at that. So we've seen that uh, the word the word it creates it brings things to being and that is the word that was sent by god from his mouth that he said let there be and we've seen the word also is christ and christ was sent we all know that um in the book of john 3 16 for god so loved the word that he gave us his only begotten son that will never believe in him he shall not perish but shall have an eternal or everlasting everlasting life so lord god sent his his son and here we are also told that he sent his word to heal us and to rescue us from our destruction which is to heal us from our sin and also to rescue us from the destruction which is death I hope we are together at that. So we're also going to see how when we use the word of God in our daily lives and especially in our prayers. I just saw something today in the morning. Um, in the book of Hebrews, let me confirm that. Hebrews, well, it's actually in the book of Ephesians. I think I'm falling in love with the Hebrews. It is well. So in the book of Ephesians, I well, I was explaining about now how we use uh, the word of God in our prayers. And I need you to know how powerful and important it is for you to use the word of God. And also to know what is in your Bible. Don't wait for uh, maybe when you only open uh, when you only open your Bible. Okay, it's dropping this uh, that you should meditate upon my way day and night. Day and night. Meditate upon this word. We've seen that. Okay, Hebrews 1, 1, 7, Once, uh, not, not 1, 7, in the book of Hebrews 4, 4, yes, we've seen that, uh, for the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword, it penetrates even to dividing souls and spirit, who does that, I mean, do you see how, how strong and powerful the word of God is? it is alive it is active it doesn't matter how old your bible is 
i know we can think a uh, fees what it's been here for years for ages you know but we are told it is alive it is active it is sharper than a double edged sword it penetrates and divides soul and spirit spirit is not tangible but it still divides that it uh, it divides joints and marrow it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart that is how powerful the word of god is and so because you're seeing it is alive and it is active and in Ephesians, we are told that um well we all know that uh, when we declared that we are born again that i'm a son of god now that i'm forgiven and uh, i've received christ as my personal savior you declared our war. we all know that so we are in battle but we are not in the battle of fighting with our flesh and blood we are not fighting with our flesh and blood what we are doing is we fight this battle spiritually and here we are told in the book of ephesians 6 that you should put or wear the full armor of god and i actually noted today in the morning that these are the uh the word has repeated put on the full armor of god 11 and also uh, it has also repeated, uh, therefore, put on the full armor of God, 13. That is uh, how important it is. But I want us to also only use um, the last part of this, which says, um, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. I always say, okay, which is the word of God? And I I always say, that is uh, 6 verse 17, take up... Um, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, uh, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I always say, because I know we're in the battle, and we are not fighting uh, using flesh and blood. We are fighting uh, principalities and all these things. Using the word of God in your prayers, it is like your prayers are your weapon. All right, and this weapon it has to has um. This is my this is what I, I always say. It is like a gun. No, your prayers are, are like a gun. And your gun has to, to have bullets in order for it to be effective. So the word of God is the bullet. To me, that is what I say. It is the bullet. So if I pray and I don't use the word of God, my prayers are not effective. So that is how important it is. Um taking much time. Sorry for that. So in the book over, uh, we are going to see now how we use uh, and how we activate even our uh, the angels that we we were given. We all know that we have uh, angels. When you are born, you are given an angel, uh, a guardian angel. And some of their, their story told, their stories told that uh, some of our angels are very uh, not, um, they are not active because we do not give them work. And when we give them work, it is not often as we should. Yeah, so I want to I want to mention something that we can activate the ministry of our angels when you use the word of God. In the book of a, a Psalm, in the book of Psalm 103, 20, Psalm 103, 20, bless affectionately, gratefully praise the Lord, you, his angels, you mighty ones who do his commandments, hearkening to the voice of his word. You who do his commandments, commandments in a way, whatever God tells them to do. When they when when God tells them guard or protect that, they do that. And hearkening to the voice of his word. The voice of his word. This is the word of God. Yeah, it is the word of God in our lives. This is what we use. So who is going to give a voice to the word of God? It is us when we use the word of God, when we speak the word of God in our lives, in our daily lives, in our in our prayers, in our walkings with her, in our families, we give the voice of God. So these angels, they hearken to that. Yeah, they quickly do what the word of God say. I need you, I need to mention something that we do not summon angels. We do not give orders to angels. I need you to, to note that. They only hearken to the voice of God and to the commandments of God. We are told in the book of our of hebrews 1 7 uh to 14 uh i would say you read from 7 to 14 or from just uh, ju you can just read the whole of it but also note i'll only read 14 
are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation who shall be heirs of salvation us who are they ministering to us those who are born again yes these ministering spirits the angels who are ministering spirits there is another one that says that isn't it obvious that all angels yeah all angels sent to help out with those lined up to receive salvation they are sent to help us 30 minutes i'm only going to take a few minutes now from here around five or something also so uh we are told that they are they minister to us they they help us so when we summon them using the word of god we do not give them orders we only use the word of god to direct them and to tell them what they should do all right using the word of god and giving the voice to the word that is written they only hearken to the voice of God, the commandments of God, and the voice of the word of God. So I need you to note that, that we do not summon. I was seated with someone on a, on a, in a matatu, and uh, no, I was expressing my one of my experiences sometimes back when uh, I was attacked. And I was telling her how I don't want to get late nowadays. I just want to, to be on time and just uh, get home on time. And she was telling me, you summon the angels and you tell them. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to uh, to interject or say anything. But I know we do not summon angels. Yeah, We do not summon angels, but we use the word of God. And that is also why it is good for you to use the word of God, even in your daily, your daily lives. What do you do uh, when situation comes? You should take a word of God that is written regarding your situation. Is it marriage? Is it a child? Is it family? Is it unity? Is it your country? They are all their Bible verses that regard all these uh, life situations in our life. And therefore, we are supposed to use to use them. We've seen that the word of God is alive and it is like a, a double edged. It is even active, sharper more than a double-edged sword yeah it has all those things so uh we are going to continue to study more about the word of god and how we are supposed to use it in our lives how you're supposed to pray using the word of god and child of god i want to beg you today please know what the word of god says about your life know what the word of god says about your life i know sometimes we might use the word of God even in our prayers and you, you say you're thinking, why is, we, why is it uh, that God is not answering me? We are going to also see that why sometimes we might uh, be effective, we might be uh, on point on how we pray, the content of our prayers. Uh, it could be so strong, but then there may be other things that are hindering. It could be maybe uh, we are not believing, we are doubting, we are not living right with God, our motives are right, we are not praying in accordance to will. Those are some of uh, the reasons why our prayers, even when we use the word of God, or even when we are we are we are using what the lord says in the bible regarding our situation that those are some of the reasons why we may not be answered so shalom guys i know i have gone so very quickly so i urge you go back to your bible and read and uh, listen as well read and know what the word of god is saying regarding christ the word regarding the word that was spoken by god and how it is not going to return to him void christ never returned to, to to god void he never he had to accomplish that which he had been sent to come and accomplish and we see even uh, in the creation the word of god when he spoke the word of god things came into existence and we can see also when we summon or when we we speak the word of god uh the angels they take charge and they help us out uh in uh, in our situation i'm going to share a story next time of a story that uh, of a story given by by people saying uh, how uh, a lady used the word of god and uh, they they got their help so thank you god thank you for your word thank you for speaking to us thank you lord i glorify and i magnify your holy name thank you because of my listener i pray the lord you shall continue to minister unto them that you shall help them know that the word of the lord is activities 
it is sharper than a double-edged sword it is alive and we are supposed to use it god and help us to know that uh, the word of god it covers all our situations and we can use it to have effective prayers in our lives we thank you we glorify we love your name in the mighty name of jesus i speak blessings i speak favor i speak your anointing and i speak your grace or go meet them at the point of their needs apply to all their needs in accordance to riches in glory i pray for more strength i pray jehovah master that we shall help them to grow in your word and to know you and to have an intimate relationship with you and to dwell in the secret place and to love you more and more in the mighty name of jesus i do pray and i trust and i believe i love you guys see you next time i'm telling you i feel like doing these are uh, like every day but then uh the other situations that are hindering me from doing that but i thank god he will, i know he'll be giving me opportunity and whenever he gives me an opportunity to come and share the word of god with you i surely will be doing that thank you all for your prayers and for uh for your messages and for everything i thank god for you see you then have a productive week ahead and may god bless you in jesus name amen